I am so excited about this, you have no idea. I'm one of Manolo's biggest fans. Um, and just talking to him even now gets me excited. But I don't know if we're going to have as much time as I want to ask him everything I want to ask him. So I shall start immediately. Um, I am going to introduce him and then we'll watch a little film. So he began his career as a shoemaker over 40 years ago and has won numerous awards for the art ever since. Born in Spain and raised in London, his designs are now worn by women and men all over the world. In addition, they appear in books, television shows, in films, on red carpets, and in museums, and rightly so. Not only is he one of the most influential and successful designers of our time, he's undoubtedly one of the nicest. And I am so honored to be speaking with him here today. Before we welcome him on stage, let's take a look at him in action. Okay, so do you remember um, who was your who was the first pair of shoes that you sold to commercially? Who bought them? Um, two people, in fact, at the same time. Lulu de la Falaise, which is not here any longer, and um, Bianca Jagger. Okay, yes. well, that's quite good too. First customers. That was customers. a wonderful big beginning. And, it's, and you yes. haven't looked back. And you haven't looked no, back I since. No, I just still love those kind of women. And your shoes are worn by women all over the world, but you're based in London and you design in London. We've seen you in your atelier here. What's it like for you um, designing something at home and seeing it worn and sold around the world? Are you tempted to keep hopping on a plane and coming everywhere? Or are you very happy based in your one atelier? I'm very happy in my atelier. I, didn't, I wish I never had to take a plane. I can stand planes. <laughs> but uh, this is what I do all the time. Um, I want to hear about how uh, we have New York Fashion Week going on at the moment. We then have London Fashion Week coming up. You've just done a big presentation yesterday, which was beautiful. Congratulations. Thank you. In the beginning, you started working alongside a lot of designers. Designers use your shoes in their shows in addition to you designing your own. Yes. In the beginning, you worked with John Galliano, with Christian, uh, yes, Christian Dior in the beginning. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. But um, before that, I used to work with the most extraordinary man in England, which was Ozzy Clark. He's not here anymore either, but he was the most influential designer in 1973, 74. <clears throat> and um, I was very lucky to be there. Um, I talked to you the other day about your, your th one of your uncles. Uh, my aunt. My yes. auntie. My aunt. Your auntie, yes. yes. Um, my aunt, who was a house model for Ozzy Clark. Ozzy Clark, Bless and her. she was very beautiful. And she still is, I suppose. Yes, she is still is very beautiful. <laughs> but anyway, so um, that is the beginning of my life in London. So I have an incredible um, affection for England. But I inherited from my father, too, what he was totally Anglophile. He's the only man in the world that I know that she ha he has all the Winston Churchill <coughs> speeches, um, books and books. I mean, boring, but I mean, you know, he was mad about this kind of thing, you know. And, you, and you, are you mad about books now as well? Indeed. So. I have to stop soon because I don't even know how to move somewhere because my house is just falling to pieces now. We have to find you some storage. Aside from your um, books, are you hopping around museums? Are you going off to the V&A Museum? Or is it all in your head that you create these things season after season? Depends. If I'm traveling, unfortunately, um, I go to places that I love to go. And it's always the same, the same places like, you know, in, if I'm going to Spain, I go to places like Valladolid, Salamanca, Madrid, uh, Escorial. If I go to London, if I go to England, I just, or in London, I'd be here all day long at the v &A or whatever. I live not far from the v &A, so I'm completely one of those victims of the V&A. And when you're in America, are you at the Met? Is that a big place for you, the Indeed, Costume Institute? Indeed, I was going to go yesterday, but I was too sick, I couldn't go. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> well, I'm glad I, you I'm saved yourself uh, for us today. <laughs> right, I'm going to just hold it there, and we're going to watch a film now. The first film you watched was also by Michael Roberts. Michael Roberts is a brilliant British stylist, art director, um, a great friend of Manolo's. We're going to talk about it in a second. Um, but this is one of three films that we're showing, re they've really only been seen by very few people, so it's a big deal that we get to see them tonight. Um, this is a film called The Boy Who Made Shoes for Lizards, and we're going to watch that, and then Manolo's going to tell us a little bit about this amazing project. That was a film by Michael Roberts. Now, I just want to ask, tell us about The Boy Who Did Make Shoes for Lizards. Tell us a little bit about him. 
This is absolutely a dream, but a dream absolutely true. This is what Michael imagined when I was telling and showing pictures of me when I was a boy, uh, because I was like that, actually. All day long, I was alone in a huge property with bananas. This is what my grandfather did, had bananas, land with bananas. And uh, the ideal thing for a child was of being inside of the house, reading or outside with animals. And I used to do sho shoes with lizards and dogs with Cadbury bonbons, what do you call candy? You know, they used to be wonderful Cadbury candy, uh, candies. They used to be the most extraordinary colors in, in the paper, silver paper, you know. So I did those creations. You would take the foil and then wrap it around the lizard's feet. And that was the, yes. that was the first shoes you ever made, before Indeed. the espadrilles. One of, before even thinking about espadrilles before and everything. things like that. That's great. I used to carry the lizards in my pockets. And I really? used to have food, yes. I love them. Sweet little lizards. Yes. Um, okay, so, so the lizards are new. On you went to create huge things. You have stores all around the world. You have customers all around the world. You design however many collections a year. Um, and you seem to have been doing that for over 40 years. Indeed, a little bit more than 40 years now. Yes. How do you relax? I do relax in the factories. It's my only time of joy, really. And then when I'm free or I have free time, I don't sleep very much. So I watch movies. I was watching movies when I was a boy. Since I was a boy, I was watching, like, waiting Saturdays to go to the Nanya to the Circo de Marte, which was the only cinema in the island. So um, this has always been my, my relaxation, movies and books. So here I am. I have at home maybe 35,000 DVDs and Blu-rays or whatever it is. And um, this is the only way I relax, yes? Okay, that's great. <laughs> And the, the process of making a shoe, I'm sure that you're really familiar with it and imagine that everybody is, but, but they aren't. So I just wanted to ask you a little about, about, about your working process. There's, you have a shoe, you have a last, you end up creating something like this. For you, what, what actually is the process from having something in your head to something now on my feet, lucky me? Uh, what's that process? process is very slow process because you know you have ideas I have ideas at night or whatever it is go down to put a little paper do the sketch and then um, six the sketches are very very famous in their own right which so that says a lot about you well just but anyways I think of it I mean but what, what I like to do is just go to the factory cut the first thing I do is just create the, the heel somebody does it for me now and um, the second is do the the last and the shape of the shoe in wood. Then naturally nowadays is everything technically done with machines. So, but the, the first thing I do it myself, yes. So we saw in the in the in the first film that you're you are making the last yourself in wood still. This is the one I'm going. Yeah. Yes, yes, I do. Yeah. It, yes. And that's quite rare, isn't it, for today? Yes, most of the people do work on all the designers now. This battalion of designers I created in those 40 years, what they do is just send everything by computer, I mean, which is not, doesn't interest me at all. Okay, and then once the last <coughs> is there, me? once the last is there, what's the next stage? In terms of fabric and, and all the embellishments that, that you choose? That is a long period of uh, gestation, to call it that way, because I had to find uh, the people, I call them textile people, the leather people. May, sometimes we do the colors before, we just do the colors that we want to use, but it um, takes about six months, about eight months to do the whole process of creating the shoe, yes. Eight it's not like a dress, boom, you do it, I'm doing it. And are you sourcing these embellishments and everything from around the world, or is it mainly from home, or are you working with India and... Italy. Mm, I rather work nowadays. Um, situation in the world is so, you know, crazy. So um, I try to work just in Europe. Uh, if I was in America, I just only use American products. Uh, maybe you can use um, from India some wonderful pearls, the rock pearls that you don't get in Europe. But I try to keep it in Europe, and um, you have to support the industries nowadays. Yeah. And I buy products in England, I buy the best flannels in the world, I buy the best silks uh, in Italy, everything done in Italy. And even now, the stitches and, um, no, uh, we have a wonderful shoe, which is like Catherine of Medici type of um, sewing the pearls and they have kept it. 
so fabulous that still at the age nowadays people kept the tradition such that they still have the same production of and this is what I'm trying to do if I could just if I could be um, at more time I just teach people how to keep the traditional worlds working and on, 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 on by hand and um Work, looking at that film about with Michael Roberts, take us through a little bit about how that film came about. We've got one more to watch, which I'm also really excited about. Don't worry, we're nearly no, there. No, 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 it's the hand. Oh, it's the hand. <laughs> oh, I thought it was me. Um, <laughs> no, no, come on. Um, so just tell us a little bit about this project, because it's pretty awesome that you get Rupert Everett to play you. I mean, lucky for Rupert Everett, quite frankly, but just tell us how this came about, because... For me, so many fashion companies now are going into film and they're not always executing it so well. This, when I saw it, I was so excited to share it because it's something really special. How did it come about? It's so natural because I know him for 40 years or more. This is and Michael. Michael Roberts. Yes. And um, he knows exactly what I'm up to doing. And I say to him, let's gonna do, this year I'm doing Philip II with a touch of, um, Scott, Scottish, like sort of William Morris type of uh, drawings and things like that. So he knew what I wanted to do and he got all those designs of Salome, Oscar Wilde, and I put it on top of the shoe and blah, blah. So it's like that. He knew what I wanted and he just expressed it. And you can see there what it, I tried to say. That is what I did in England. Okay, and, and, and how does Rupert Everett come into it? Uh, Rupert is another old boy, another friend of Michael. So Rupert said, yes, that's going to do it. We went home in Bath and we spent about two days and we did it. They did it. I mean, I have nothing to do with me, but um, Michael did it. Well, it's great. Well, we're going to take a look now at the third film. He's good. Yeah, you can have a rest now. We're going to look at the third film. Um, and just enjoy the rest. It's not going to last because then we've got Q&A. So we're going to take a look at the third film. This is also by Michael Roberts and it features two real uh, British style icons and big friends of Manolo's, which we'll talk about in a second. So that film was shot in England in Shropshire, in London and Shropshire in England, and featured two ladies, Amanda Harlick and Lucy Burley, who were two real British Adore style icons. Them, yes. Well, it's almost like a family film because um, we have Lucy, we have... Um, the child there, which is 17, uh, Olympia, which Her is the son, daughter, Otis, Otis and yes. uh, um, Tara, I think yeah. it is, oh, yes. Tara. Okay. And <laughs> both of them. And um, the girl is Sophie Hicks, the, the architect used to be at Vogue before, and she's 17. And uh, so it's like, you know, it was a sweet film, like sweet moment to everybody collaborate. It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful to watch. And are you, um, are you planning on doing, is this kind of a thing for you? Is this something you'd like to get into more as the film or this is just a little side thing? Oh, or is this no, really exciting? No, this is Michael's, um, yeah. this is a Michael's project and uh, you want to do it, I do it, so. But if you, you're gr growing up in, with the cinema in, at home, it obviously does have a big influence on you. Indeed, yes. I mean, Bridget films, I mean. What are your favorite films? Um, I got so many, I think impossible to tell you which one, but I love, <coughs> I love romantic comedies like sort of like David Lean, Brief Encounter and things like that. I'm an old boy, so I love that. So people don't even know what David Lean or Brief Encounter is, but this is what I'd like to yeah, much. They can go and look it up when they, and they Oliver don't. Twist, by Oliver Twist too, which is fabulous. Yes, there's a David big Dickensian, Lee. big Dickensian influence in the last. Indeed, film. that all is. Are very you a big Dickens, a Dickens fan? I grew up with Little Dorrit, read it in Spanish. So it's always been like I've never been a foreign to, to English things or English life or anything. So I've been there always. Talking of Dickens, let's just quickly talk about your own sartorial style. You're very well known for your great tailoring. Is that something you have done in England or is that something you pick up around the world? Papa was, a, Papa was very elegant when he was young, when he was like, you know. Um, I don't know, I inherit it again. It's nothing that I can claim this very much. But I like mad colors. I like really vile things together. I love that. <laughs> if it's a chic or not, I don't know, but I like it. Well, it's very chic. If, if it translates into your shoes, then it's definitely very chic. And I like your green. Um, right, we are going to open up to the audience Q&A. Um, someone from Apple is going to... Uh, 
pass you a microphone. If you can speak loudly, please, and direct your question to Manolo, and we'll have time for maybe two or three. Hi, my name is Nico. Um, I just wanted to ask, what is your opinion about independent brands being acquired by conglomerates versus independent ownership? I didn't get about the France what? Um, like, how do you feel about independent brands getting acquired by conglomerates like Louis Vuitton, Moe, Hennessy? Uh, or I really believe till I die. One should be, if you believe in what you do, you should stay on your own. I, I, I'm not greedy. I've never been much about money, but I really b respect um, for the old tradition that, you know, business is, is not Hobson choice, uh, which is David Lean again, but um, I want small businesses. I want, this is what is fantastic about places like uh, Europe at the time, not now. Now everybody's bought by somebody. But I really believe in, in, in what you say. I want to, if you can, if you can stay by your alone, independent, stay. What has it meant for you to remain independent for all these years? Is it just that you keep the same staff and you keep control? No, I don't care about control. No. My sister is the one who does all those things, and now my niece, which is C, whatever it is, C, whatever. That's your niece, uh, Christina. Yeah, C, uh, yeah. Your it's niece, Christina, is CEO. Christina. I'll just add that out now. <laughs> and they care about things. I don't care about things. Um, but what I really like to do is, like, keep very small, you know. Yeah. But is, is that so that you can continue to create the way that and you do, do create? And do what I want to do, you know, exactly. and not be in fashion. I hate people say, oh, you do fashion. I say, no, I don't do fashion. I do whatever I want to do. And this is very selfish, but this is the way I am, so I'm not going to change now. Okay, long may it continue. <laughs> Hi, um, I just want to ask if, if you see this shoe, which is, uh, what word will you describe it and what inspired you to make this shoe? It's I don't the even know what shoe is that. What is that true? I don't see a thing. I'm blind Perhaps as hell. Perhaps the gentleman could bring it up. Oh, goodness gracious. That shoe, uh, <laughs> uh, this is about 25 years old or something. I don't know, so long, but I have, you know, it was made for a film. And it had been going on for 10 or 15 years without doing anything, without even photograph, which is extraordinary. I mean because um, it's very simple. I think it's, it's, it's a question of being blue or whatever, that people can use it in weddings and things like that, you know. But that is, you know, it's a simple shoe. It's not, it's not one of my typical, very, it is a very well-known design, but it's not, it's not one, one of, of my, the most one of my <laughs> loves. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Third question, please. Next question. Hi. You were how quoted. You? Good. How are you? You were quoted today in WWD um, telling somebody over the weekend to not wear satin in the snow and in the weather and the inclement. Is that correct? I think so. This is just common sense. Does I mean, that mean? <laughs> I mean Does that mean that um, you will be designing snow boots or rain boots in the future? <laughs> I, I've done it already, you know. But if you want snow boots now, the best ones LL Bean. They're fabulous. <laughs> They're the best. <laughs> but I would love to do maybe something look like LL Bean, but it's already done. So. Okay, we have another question, please. Hi. Um, as an artist and as a commercial artist, how much of the consumer goes into your creative process? How much of the consumer? Yeah, like how much do you think about, oh, who's going to wear these shoes? Or like, oh, like I want to make this shoe, if I that am, makes any sense. I am much more, I want to make that shoe. Yes, if the consumer like is wonderful, but I never do things with the mind thinking about this is going to be sold there, there, there. I just do whatever I want to do. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But, but, but I don't want to do consumer stuff. No, I don't think about that. Okay, we could talk forever. I really could talk forever, but I'm worried about your voice, and we have actually run My out of time. Your voice doesn't exist, so you can keep going. And yeah, mind. <laughs> can we have one more question, please? Just one more question. We have such a big crowd today. Um, hello, I'm a very big fan of your shoes. First and top. Uh, you mentioned that you have certain shoes that you absolutely love. Can you describe us one of um, one pair of shoes that you love? Just now, without being too far, I like that one. 
because I, this is possibly the so one I've I. seen today, this red one, actually. I love satin. I love uh, wonderful materials. They're not very practical because, as I say, this lady say before, uh, on the rain, on the snow, it's not an ideal thing to wear. But it's so beautiful. I'd like that, too. Yes, at the moment. Well, on that note, because so do I, and I'm not going to take them <laughs> off for a long time, even if it's snowing <laughs> outside. Thank you very, very much to Mr. Blanick for sharing on a, on a long day. We, I'm a huge fan. We think you're great. Thank you very much.